Dr. Pamela Weibel. In less than 30 minutes, you will all finally be physicians. And this summer, you'll be set loose on your very own patients. How exciting is that? Maybe a little nerve wracking. During your career, depending on specialty and work ethic, you may care for more than 100,000 patients. Only a few will live in your heart forever. You will join them on a sacred journey for two. Trust them. They will guide you from nervous new doctor and teach you how to be a healer. As a new intern, I was assigned to Emily. She had idiopathic bronchiectasis, a fatal lung disease, and refused to take her meds, so the transplant team signed off on her case. They abandoned us. We were both 25. Sobbing uncontrollably, with her oximeter alarm shrilling, she looked to me for help. I didn't know how to help her die. So I snuck my dog Happy into her room at night for midnight excursions. With her portable oxygen tank rolling behind us, we'd hold hands and disappear across the hospital parking lot into a blanket of grass where we'd gaze at the stars and she'd share her grief of never giving birth or finding her soulmate. Emily and I became soul sisters on an adventure of a lifetime until the day in her bedroom, sitting beside her body wrapped in a Mickey Mouse blanket, I signed her over to the morgue. Emily has never left my side. Patients like Emily will hold your hand and lead you to places where there is no algorithm, no attending, where you have no earthly idea what you're doing. All you have is each other. After Emily, Harold stumbled awkwardly into my heart, a loner who distrusted technology and doctors. He lived in the woods caretaking a wildlife refuge with no electricity, no phone or car, but he had great health insurance through his employer. His ex-girlfriend recommended me, so he'd hitchhike to my office three hours each way. One day he came in, his back covered in nodules. I excised one, sewed him up, gave him a kiss on the forehead, a slip for a chest x-ray, and an appointment to return next week. It was metastatic lung cancer. He chose chemo, moved to the city, got a cell phone, and quickly spiraled to his death. I got him back to his cabin. He died the next day. His ashes now food for the forest he so loved, where I visit him each fall. I think Emily kind of helped me with Harold. You're never really alone. Some patients follow you forever. It's weird that I only remember one patient from med school, Veronica, end-stage kidney disease. I still see her alone in her crib in that dark hospital room, where I'd lift her up and sing her to sleep in a rocking chair. My peds attending walked by one day, and I remember this probably because it landed in my permanent record, <laughs> and he said, Dr. Weibel, you are a doctor when your patients need a doctor, and a mother when they need a mother. I'm proof that you don't need to maintain professional distance. I believe in professional closeness. You can be a doctor and be the real you. Is it legal to kiss dying patients? I don't care. I do what's right for patients. You will stray from evidence-based guidelines and do the same, because what patients truly need has no ICD or CPT codes and never requires a prior authorization. As an intern, do something so epic, it can't fit into an EMR. 
Our biggest threat to patient relationships is what I call assembly line medicine. I'm a womb to tomb till death do us part physician. My dream of being a small town family doctor doing house calls was way too big for my little cubicle. If your dream is bigger than your cubicle, leave your cubicle. You can practice medicine your way as an employee, a business owner, or an entrepreneur. And if you're freaking out about your debt or end up hating your residency, don't despair. You can launch your own clinic with just one or two years of postgraduate training. And if you register it as a nonprofit, you can totally get your loans forgiven. Doctors I know are doing this now. As a physician employee in a big box clinic, I was so miserable, even suicidal. Then I did something really crazy, which what would that be for me? I asked my patients for help. I invited them to design their own ideal medical clinic, to write my job description for me, and I promised to do whatever they wanted as long as it was basically legal. They shared 100 pages of their most creative ideas. We adopted 90% of their feedback and opened our community clinic one month later without any outside funding where I've never turned any patient away for the last 14 years for lack of money. And this is the first ideal clinic designed entirely by patients. My patients saved my career and my life, because I was thinking of working at Starbucks and just doing something totally different. But I probably wouldn't have gotten the job because they'd be like, you're overqualified. So luckily, my patients came to my rescue. And I want to assure you that your relationships with patients will save you from lawsuits because patients don't sue doctors they love. I've been running a physician suicide hotline since surviving my own close call. Several docs told me that their suicides were actually averted by a patient thank you card. Keep your thank you cards. Read them often. On your worst night, those letters may save your life. After speaking to thousands of suicidal physicians who survived, I noticed one trait they share very unusual among doctors. They ask for help. The most common phrase I hear I would have been one of your statistics, but you called me back right away. They're shocked that I called them back. I ask, when you're on call, don't you respond right away? Hmm, why don't we do that for each other? In your last few minutes as a medical student, take a good look at the person to your right and left. Good. <laughs> Hold hands for a minute, please. Aw, it's so cute. <laughs> I'm asking you to please be on call for each other. Look, listen, and feel. Notice when a doctor is struggling. Look up at all your beautiful uh, parents celebrating you today. They're so proud. <laughs> Promise to watch over each other so no parent ever gets a phone call from the police that their child has died in residency. I was tasked with delivering a few uplifting words today, and they're coming. <laughs> For now, though, you might want to keep holding hands just a little longer. You can do it. This is tough to hear, but so important for your future. A med student in the Army Reserves told me she was less stressed in Afghanistan during active sniper fire than med school. Here's why. That was like totally shocking. I had to call her and figure out like, what? The reason why is she had total trust in her comrades. 
She knew if killed by enemy fire, she would be brought home, covered in American flag, and honored with a proper burial. They had her back. In med school, she never knew who would stab her in the back. Trying to change that culture here, starting with your generation, okay? You can do it. We are brothers and sisters in medicine. Please protect and defend each other. If a resident is being pimped with esoteric questions, say, I don't think any of us know the answer. Let's look it up together. Please do that. And when in doubt, hold hands. Be like the preschoolers on the wooded path by my house. Every morning they walk by. They're so cute. Almost makes me want to have kids, but not really. Um, it's much easier to like have you as my kids. You're already diaper trained and everything. You're already, you already know how to go to the bathroom and you're, you already know how to take a shower and you can tie your own shoes. No, I've just never really been into the young kid thing looks really difficult. Anyway, but it's really cute to watch them. Uh, they're preschoolers that are getting, I don't know if you've heard of this, rope trained. Um, there's a rope that they hold on to and they each put one hand on the rope so that they learn how to walk in a line and they're equally spaced. And they're the cutest thing in Oregon because they all have like colorful little tiny rain jackets, all different colors, right? And little tiny rain boots and they all like march down this wooded path in front of my house. They're so cute. So it's the most adorable scene ever, and what, what happens is see if one of them stops to look at a little mushroom, right? They all stop with the rope, and they all look at it. So see, that's what we should still be doing, right? I mean, yeah, it, it just stick together, hold hands, because, you know, I've, I've taken hundreds of doctors into the woods on hot springs retreats, soaking together in the bubbling lithium-infused water under the stars in the Oregon forest where Harold, Harold once lived. So I take them out to where Harold's ashes are, right? And these hot springs are on a cliff overlooking the Brighton Bush ri River. It's like so amazing. And it's kind of wild when I wrote this. I was thinking how interesting that Harold's kind of helping me heal doctors now. But the weird thing that happens every once in a while on these retreats, a doctor will come up to me and say, I don't know why I'm here. I don't even like doctors. I think that was Harold's opening line during our first office visit. But it took me years to deconstruct that comment from a physician. Why do doctors dislike doctors? Hurt people hurt people. Wounded healers wound each other. Most people don't bond over codes, crash carts, and stillborns. Bonding over trauma creates trauma bonds, leading to maladaptive drug and alcohol use to numb the pain. So the solution here is to befriend each other by doing stuff normal people do every once in a while, right? Instead of bonding over dead bodies and, you know, so many suffering patients, go on a hike and cook dinner together. And as interns, the best way to prevent trauma bonds is to first bond over your hopes and dreams with your new colleagues. Now to celebrate, my number one recommendation, always keep your umbilical cord plugged into your dream. Reflect back on medical school. Remember how you felt on your favorite rotation or with that attending who really inspired you to go for your dreams. Maybe you have a patient like Emily or Harold or Veronica who touched your heart. I want you to go back to those precious moments. Hopefully you can all remember one of those precious moments, your favorite rotation. And I want you to ask yourself these three questions back in the moments. So do you ever feel so excited that you can't wait to get to work Monday morning to see that special patient again? Have you ever felt that way through all of medical school, right? Number two, are you having so much fun at work that you would do it for free? Like delivering this amazing baby and, you know, these, these incredible experiences that you have. 
I mean, I think all the time in my office, wow, this is so much fun. I don't even need to get paid. This is amazing. And, and number three, do you love your job so much that you never want to retire? Like you can't imagine just sitting on a golf course like all day long. It wouldn't be as fun. So raise your hand if you answered yes to any one of those questions. Oh, good. Your dreams are still alive. You kept many of their dreams alive. Congratulations. What a good crew of teachers. So those of you who raised your hands, which it seemed like it was the majority, some of you were a little worried and were halfway putting your hand up, but I want you to realize that you are very fortunate to still have passion for your career, which you should have when you graduate medical school. I asked those same three questions to 4,000 doctors during a keynote in Las Vegas. And everyone was laughing to hide the pain of losing their dreams. I can still answer yes to all three questions. And so could about 20 doctors out of 4,000. May you be one of those 20 doctors to create such an amazing life in medicine that you'll never need a vacation. Inspired by a Zen poet, I'll conclude with this. Physicians who are masters in the art of medicine make little distinction between their work and their play, their labor and their leisure, their mind and their body, their education and their recreation, their love and their religion. They hardly know which is which and simply pursue whatever they do with excellence and grace, leaving others to decide whether they are working or playing. To them, they are always doing both. May you be blessed on your journey. Congratulations.